Hey guys, welcome back. In this lecture, I will discuss about the tips that can help you in learning web development in a better way. I'm going to explain things from the point of view of a Ruby on Rails developer, but you can apply these tips on learning any kind of framework like Django, Node.js, React, Angular, and so on. So let's consider that if you are a fresher and you want to be a good Ruby on Rails developer in less but good enough time, then you must follow the steps I am going to explain in this lecture. Here I will show you a 10 week plan that will really helpful in learning Ruby on Rails in a job oriented way. Okay, consider the point job oriented way. Okay, because learning is a different thing and learning something to get some output or to achieve something is a different thing. Okay, so these 10, 10 weeks will prepare you for a job oriented manner Ruby on Rails developer. Okay, so let's start with the first week plan. In the first week, you need to focus only on two things and both the things are the prerequisite to learn web development. Okay, so first give three days to learn HTML and practice as much as you can and four to five daily hours will be enough. Okay, try to cover all types of HTML properties associated with each tag. Second, give four days to learn CSS. Okay, and practice the same with html as much as you can and again four to five daily hours will be enough you can cover all the basics here like css properties and selectors media queries and many more and now let's see what is for the second week so you need to dedicate entire second week of your learning to learn bootstrap okay apply all your learn skill of CSS and HTML with the bootstrap. Okay, you will become better and smooth responsive web designer with bootstrap. To learn the bootstrap, five to six hours every day for a week will be enough. And try to design things of your interest. For example, if you love to shop online or at least you prefer online shopping apps or websites, then you can try to design web pages similar to your favorite shopping site. It could be anything like Amazon, Alibaba, eBay, Flipkart and so on. If you love to watch movies, TV shows and web series, then you should try to design web pages similar to the streaming platforms like Netflix, Hotstar, Amazon Prime and so on. Even designs similar to YouTube is also not a bad idea. If you love to spend time on social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and other then try to design web pages for your favorite social media platform. I'm giving these examples only because this can make your learning very interesting. Because when you design web pages of your preferable product or apps, then you will never waste your time and you generate more productive work. This can also help you in thinking about the logical aspects of such application like how the data is displaying on the web pages, how the search results are showing and how authentication working in and many more. So this is the initial two weeks plan. If you follow the schedule, honestly, then I'm sure after a couple of weeks, you will be find yourself much better in front end skills like HTML, CSS and Twitter bootstrap. And believe me, this is really helpful for a full for a developer who want to be a full stack developer, because as a full stack developer, you need to deal with both client side data presentation and server side logics as well. Okay. Now let's look at what you need to follow for the third week. Okay. So in third week, you need to cover two things, the basics of the core JavaScript and practice jQuery. Okay. So just give first three days of second week to and four to five hours every day to learn JavaScript. Okay. Here you need to practice the DOM events, ways to fetching DOM elements, JavaScript output, how to make DOM dynamic using J JavaScript and so on. Don't worry if you are not able to cover up everything here because as a full stick developer, you will get a lot of chances to work with JavaScript in your developer journey. So just give only three days and at least four to five hours every day for it. And along with this, do not forget to give at least two hours every day for the steps that you cover in learning HTML and CSS and Bootstrap. Because if you only focus on JavaScript here and do not practice the bootstrap, CSS and HTML, then gradually it becomes hard to be in touch with all the work you did in previous week. Okay. Now as the second thing of the third week, you need to practice jQuery for rest of the four days of third week. Okay. And you need to focus on jQuery only. Okay. 
but make sure you give at least four to five hour, four to five hours every day for it and rest two three hours for the things learned so far jquery is nothing but the smarter way of working with javascript whatever you can do with javascript can be doable with jquery as well and with less amount of code and time than javascript now one can think that there are various advanced javascript ways to make website dynamic with more better front end frameworks like react js angular js view js stimulus js even rail 7 is now set to use the stimulus js as default to serve the javascript on website okay then why to learn javascript and jquery basics okay the answer is that all such frameworks are based on javascript so if you know the basics of javascript and jquery learning these advanced framework will be more easier okay so till this point the front end part is complete now you will find yourself more better at front end development you just need 3 weeks for it and if you can give 5 to 6 hours on an average every day okay so if you calculate now your learning becomes of 100 to 120 hours okay and that is really good enough time to be a better front end developer okay and why i am focusing this front end stuff because the i am showing this plan to be a better full stack developer and as a full stack developer you need to deal with front end steps like javascript jquery bootstrap okay because you might get chance to customize some bootstrap themes or integrate some bootstrap themes and if you know the bootstrap and javascript well okay then the work will be very easier for you okay now let's look at the fourth week plan so in the fourth week there are three things that we need to cover okay first learn and practice basics of oops concept in the fourth week you need to focus on learning oops concept like classes object methods inheritance abstractions abstract classes and others because ruby is a pure object oriented programming language and you have to know about basics of oops concept because you need to deal with these concepts in ruby and rails both for this stuff two days should be enough and four to five hours every day but if it is not enough then just increase the hours by a couple of hours every day but restrict this for two days only okay then learn the basics of database and practice basic sql commands okay you need to dedicate five days for this okay and at least five hours every day because you need to have some prior knowledge of relational database before start working with rails okay and it does not require to have advanced skill set in rdbms but you must have some idea about basic sql commands and clauses like select from where order limit group by and so on also not mandatory but if you can cover up the joins as well that will be great other than these sql commands you should learn about entities entity sets real relationship between two tables or entities because this will definitely help you in understanding the active record models and active record association in rails and this is enough for the week four okay so let's count hours again up to this point so up to fourth week you need to dedicate around 150 to 160 hours to cover all prerequisites to start learning ruby on rails and believe me my friends these prerequisites prerequisites will be very helpful for you when you start working with rails okay now we need to discuss the plan for fifth week okay so this is the things that you need to cover in fifth week here you need to start with ruby programming and do some oops and logical exercises learn basics of data structure like arrays hashes and so on okay so first thing is learn ruby variables and its scope and type so just dedicate one day for it and four to five hours that day okay this time should be enough to know about variables in ruby their types and scope if you think you need more time then just extend this time by two three hours more but try to cover this in one day only okay but if you think that this time is more than required time to cover the mentioned topics then just practice as much as you can from various scenarios okay the second thing is ruby class and instance methods okay so just give two days for this okay and dedicate at least five hours both days to practice this concept of classes and methods okay and try to practice both instance and class methods implement them and invoke them because knowing the difference between class and instance methods will surely help you in rails development and with this you will help yourself in organizing code in a better way 
also along with classes and objects also practice the instance and local variables because these are two variables variable types that you have to deal with frequently in ruby on rails okay the next thing is conditional and control flow so you need to dedicate next two days to learn and understand various conditional and control flow this statement in ruby and not only for ruby on rails okay these are the elements that are used in all programming languages because conditional flows are if else if else unless case when statements okay and these are used when you have to execute your code in the basis of some decision okay and similarly control flows are loops and iterators you must do some practice about this because you have to deal with these mainly iterators in rails very frequently okay for example if you have a collection and you need to iterate over that collection and display the data on the browser then you need each then you might need to deal with each or each with index iterator okay so practice that okay and there are different types of loops and iterators in ruby you do not need to be master in all within these couple of days but you must try to understand the basic concept and uses of this okay and the last thing for the fifth week is learn and practice array this is an important data structure and will be used heavily in both ruby and rails so give at least couple of days and six hours to it these two days are not enough to be master with ruby arrays but should be enough to cover basics yet important part of this okay here you should try to iterate through arrays make some logical programs like uh, find minimum and maximum element from an array without using any inbuilt ruby array method okay sort an array in ascending and descending order search through array implement binary search linear search okay count the appearance of each element into an array and so on these are very basic but good enough to give you proper exposure of arrays by basic i mean that uh, you do not have to write too much logical program but you can use all the programming elements that you cover in this week like if else iterators loops and so on okay but just give only two days to learn ruby arrays if you feel six hours are less then just extend the practice by a couple of hours okay and here the fifth fifth week is completed and you still have to give at least one more week to get more better with Ruby. Okay, so let's see what we need to do in the sixth week of our Ruby learning. So in the sixth week, you can see you need to cover Ruby hashes and other Ruby programming elements like exception, rescue, block, lambda, and box. Okay, so let's start with learning Ruby hashes. Just like arrays, hash is also an important data structure in Ruby. It overcomes some disadvantages of array. This will be used most often in Rails where you have to deal with strong parameters request body response response body and so on and all such things need you to have knowledge of hashes so just like arrays give a couple of days to prepare the ruby hash and at least six hours every day okay and practice this as much as you can in couple of days now the next thing other ruby programming elements like exceptions rescue blocks lambda and probes these are not uh, very frequently used but yeah that is very important topic okay because sometimes you have to handle the exception that are coming in your program so you can do it using rescue you need to deal with blocks lambdas and props okay so just give two to three days to cover of all these concepts mentioned in the point and four to five hours every day will be enough okay and then for rest of the week just revise all steps of ruby you covered so far and if you wish you can self analyze your learning so far and if all good then take a one day break and don't think about learning anymore that day okay just rest and enjoy because you have to deal with learning rails for next four weeks okay and just make a note on your achievement that if you follow this schedule for six weeks you will be able to cover around 240 to 260 hours within six weeks so cheers and get ready for the next week and here is the plan for seventh week okay and here every day you have to do some new things okay in the seventh week here what i will suggest that first you need to have a quick look on whatever you learn in first 
six weeks and then start working in Rails framework. Okay, so here is a small prerequisite as well. First, learn the definition of web apps, HTTP protocols, MVC architecture in brief. Okay, because you must know all these things to be better in to start with a web development. Okay, and do not give more than one day, four hours to one day and four hours to cover all this concept. Okay. If you feel four hours are less, then left it wherever you are and wait for the next day. Okay. And at the next day, what you need to do, build a Rails application from scratch and understand its directory structure. Okay. So on the second day of the seventh week, let's create your first Rails application and just try to understand that what is the work of its directory in your Rails application. Also, try to cover the Rails philosophy of building a web app and try to understand this completely so that you can adapt this standard from the beginning of your Rails developer career. Okay, understanding the direct directory structure of your Rails app will help you in organize your code and classes and like services, tasks and, and so on. Okay, and that will let, lead you to a great outcome in and better productivity. The third day of seventh week, what you need to do? Create controllers and define routes. Okay. So here you need to create your custom controllers and define routes for their actions. This will help you in understanding the controllers and the concept concept of routing in a Rails application. You will also get to know that how you should attach an HTTP verb to a route for what purpose okay here you can explore mvc architecture as well like when a request comes from the browser then which controller need to be loaded and which action of the loaded controller will serve the request and this is all helpful for understanding controller and template rendering and redirection as well okay now the fourth thing is create your first active record model and resource controller okay on the fourth day of seventh week you should see that what is an active record model and how to work with this. If you cover the entities in the database into the fourth week and Ruby classes in the fifth week, then it will be very easier for you to understand the model concepts because models are nothing but just like the plain Ruby classes which are used to store the real world entities as a database. Okay. And after creating your first model, you need to learn how to define the resource controller in your Rails application. Resources are the controllers you need to create for your models to perform CRUD operations, but just understand the models and resource controller for this day. And if you have more time left, then just revise, but do not perform CRUD today. Okay. Wait for the fifth day of the week. Now perform CRUD operation on the model. So on the fifth day of the seventh week, let's learn the CRUD operations that you need to perform on your model. Try to perform these operations from both Rails console and controller action. To perform CRUD from controller actions, you need to develop templates like new, show, index and edit as well. But if you can dedicate eight hours or more, if needed for this day, then only one day will be enough to learn and understand this. Now on the sixth day of seventh week, let's start learning some more basics of active record validations and apply these on models. And now try to perform CRUD with validation applied. Try to fail and then pass the validation. And if possible, let's create another model and complete the CRUD on it with validations. It's eight hours on this day will be enough and quite good, okay. And on the last day of seventh week, let's use Bootstrap to add better UI to your Rails templates. Okay. And try to create partials like header and footers and reuse them. You can use Bootstrap in any way, like using CDN or using some gem. Okay. Or by pinning some node modules in your Rails on application. Okay. Using Bootstrap with some gem is a good idea, but uh, if you are not uh, willing to add gems, you can use bootstrap CDNs as well in your application layout. Okay. So seventh week will be ended here and it would be better if you can dedicate eight hours every day for this week. If you are able to do so, then so far your investments for learning rails will be around 300 to 320 hours. And this is really a great investment to get high returns. Okay. Now let's move on to eighth week to learn more deep concepts of Rails. Okay, so let's see what to cover in this week. 
so in the eighth week you have to cover these things like active record association active record queries just revise and take risk so let's see what you need to cover with active record association okay this is the most important part that you must cover because in any real world application there exists some relationship between two entities these relationships could be anything like one to many many to many or one to one and in rails you need to use associations to define such relationships okay so you must cover up this part as much as you can so let's try to dedicate at least three days for it and this would be more or less okay but give at least three days okay you are learning from fourth week where you covered the relationships in rd bms will be very helpful here so just practice these associations for three days as much as you can and now the second thing is active record queries after practicing the association give next three days to be better with active record queries if you know how to write active record queries that will be better for you because now you can perform cred operations in more better and optimized way also this is something that you have to deal with during entire rails developer career so let's give at least three days to learn active record queries too and then things will be get more easier for you okay the third thing just revise and take rest okay at the last day of seventh week just take dedicated two three hours for revising the steps quickly you covered so far and then stop learning anymore for this day and take rest for rest of the day because tomorrow another more important concept is on the way to be more better after this you need to move to ninth week of your rails development career okay so let's have a look at what you need to cover in the ninth week in the ninth week the first thing is you need to cover active record validation okay so you might practice the validations into the seventh week of your learning but still this will be good for you to cover up active record validations in more details this time okay you need to practice all available validation methods as much as you can and try to be better with custom validations as well also try to customize the error messages when validation fails okay all these practice will give you a lot of confidence to work with rails validations okay now let's think of uh, time you need to dedicate for this so in my opinion two days at six hours every day will be enough for this okay if you feel if this time is less then you can extend it by a couple of hours every day and if you think this time is more then just practice more the next thing is active record callbacks okay so callbacks are very important to work in rails and there are a lot of callbacks associated at for the different stages of an object life cycle okay so just give five to six hours every day for a couple of days and in the rest time you can practice already cover stuffs okay the third thing action controller callback and strong parameters okay since you got the basic overview of controller so just got just give one completely dedicated day for learning controllers in more details and try to cover different callbacks for a controller controller callbacks are mainly preferred as filter actions okay here you can also give some time to understand the strong parameters in more better way okay so just give one day around and around seven to eight hours will be enough for this okay the next thing for ninth week is learning helpers forms partials views and assets okay for rest of the two days of ninth week let's focus on club disturbs like uh, helpers forms partials views and assets to work with these are the stuff that can help you in being a better full stack developer because these are items that needs some attention towards front end area okay so the nine week of uh, our learnings rails learning are over and now let's look at the content you can cover in the 10th week of your learning okay so these are the items that you need to cover in 10th week so first thing is action mailer sending email from a rails app or from any app is a kind of requirement that almost all or most of the apps have okay so if you practiced and know that how to send email from rails apps to outside users then this will be great to verify that emails are sending to outside users you not need to integrate gmail or other mailing services but sending emails and preview this using a gem that is known as a letter opener will also works okay and just three to four hours will be enough for learning this content okay the next thing is rails routing 
and there are different route types of routing like nested routing member routing and collection routing okay so you need to learn this thing in much better way because routing is the most important part of a rails application your rails application can exist without models views assets but and database too but it cannot exist without controllers and routing okay so you must have to cover the routing as much as you can but dedicate only two days for it and eight hours every day rest you can learn with the time okay because we don't have to learn everything just to get the good enough exposure about the routing and not only for the routing for every concept that we discussed so far and rest of the things you can discuss with the time as well now the next very important thing that is active record migrations okay models you can use to store business logic but without migration it does not make sense to have model files or model classes because migrations are something that are required to create modify tables and schema of your rails application so this is a very important to cover the migration for creating a table okay you will get the migration when you generate your model first time but to update tables by adding removing renaming attributes you have to generate migration files at your end and migrations are used for other purposes as well like seeding some data dropping the relations and so on okay so practice the migration as much as you can and dedicate two to three days for it and eight hours every day will be fine okay and this will be good enough now the fourth thing is working with ruby gems gems make your rails development more fun okay they simplify your working as they can reduce your time to develop features and there are various popular gems used by most of rails apps and developers like device to authenticate rails applications active admin for developing admin dashboards okay and kaminari for pagination will paginate is also for pagination rainsec for searching search kick for implementing elastic search and so on there are many other gems for different purposes and you can try them and even if you cannot cover most of the gems then you can learn with the tag okay even when you rel generate your empty rails application it also has some gems included in it okay now so try to add some popular ruby gems to extend your rails application and this will be helpful for you when you do professional rails development now the next thing is writing test this skill is good to have but not very necessary because when you apply as a fresher developer it is not expected for from you to write test cases okay but if you know about basics of test cases or how to write test cases and what are the ways to write test cases like mini test or r spec then it is very helpful for you okay you can write test cases for your demo rails application or practice rails application then it is really better okay and if you are not able to do that then don't worry you can learn this concept with the time now the next thing that is not belongs to the rails only but it is belongs to all the application or all the development strategies or all the development work we do these days okay this is an additional skill that is working with github okay and you must be familiar with this because not projects in the real world these days can exist without a repository okay no matter whether it is on github bitbucket or gitlab so these are all the ways to use gitlab okay like github sorry all the ways to use github okay like bitbucket and gitlab as well okay so you must know some basics like creating repositories creating pull request merging repositories merging pull request forking a repository creating commits and other commands like git config checkout and so on and stash as well okay so after the 10th week your learning reach to 500 plus hours approximately and congratulate yourself if you can achieve this okay if you learn the steps i mentioned so far for this 10th week okay then you are all set to apply as a more than a fresh and developer fresh and developer you can work on significantly good enough rails application and make sure one th that giving some um, such amount of time is not so easy but you can stick to it and maintain a discipline okay then you can achieve it okay and if you choose a project of your interest 
then it will be more easier for you because that will help you in thinking in a broader way and you can extend your real self by applying all important aspects of rest developer now let me uh, explain that why i am saying that you need to choose project of your interest for example suppose if you are taking this learning as a curriculum then somebody assign you some project and no matter whether this project is good or bad and if you are not interested in such kind of application then that would be really hard to connect you logically or connect you emotionally with that project or application but if you can if you want to use some application and if you are already using some existing application and you like it and you love this application then think in that way that if you have to develop that application then what you will think what how you will think and what you will develop how it solve the customer's problem and how it solve the real world problem then you can connect emotionally to that project and that will be really helpful for you and that will give you the broader sense of working with such application or such real world applications okay so i hope this lecture will give you some idea about how to prepare for a rails developer job and believe me my friends if you can follow this schedule only for 10 weeks then there is a flourish career waiting for you okay so just go back and forth in the lecture and see whatever you have to cover in every week till 10th week okay and then if you have any doubt let me throw the comment section i will be glad to help you okay so thanks for watching this and let's meet into the next lecture till then tata goodbye take care and stay safe